How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? The like for want of rain, which I would well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. A course of true love never did from spring. <clears throat> then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. <laughs> a good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. My good Lysander, oh, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus doves, by that which knitteth souls and prospers love, by every vow that ever man hath broke, in number more than ever woman spoke, in this same place thou hast appointed me. Oh, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Oh, keep promise, love. Oh, look, here comes Helen. Godspeed, fair Helen. Whither away? Call you me fair? That fair again unsay? Demetrius loves your fair? Oh, happy fair! Sickness is catching. Oh, were favour so, yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. My ear should catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue, sweet melody. Oh, were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I'd give to be to you translated. Take comfort. He shall no more see my face. Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearls the bladed grass, a time that lover's flight doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the woods, where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens will we turn our eye to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. Love looks not with the eyes but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. Wings and no eyes figure unheedy haste, and therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eye, he hailed down O's that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved and showers of O's did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to this wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Here is a scroll of every man's name who is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. Our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Masters, hear your parts. I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night, and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town by moonlight. There will we rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. Adieu. Ill 
met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon? Very skip hence, I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry rash wanton. Am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania? Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill in dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling on the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her over wrong? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votaress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood, when we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die, and for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I'll go with him. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not. Flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed. A certain aim he took, and let loose his love shaft from his bow, yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound, and maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once, the juice of it. On sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I watch Titania when she is asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb. I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Hence get thee gone and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that do I love you the more. 
I am your spaniel, and the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel, neglect me, lose me, strike me, spurn me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worse a place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on you. <gasps> and I am sick when I look not on you. I'll run from thee, and hide me in the brakes, and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. Fie, Demetrius! Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee, and make a heaven of hell, to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, here it is. I pray thee, give it me. <laughs> I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows. There sleeps Titania, some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her enameled skin Weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Fear not, my lord. Your servant will do so. Are we all met? Pat, Pat, here's a marvellous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage, and this hawthorn break our tanning house, and we will do it in action, and we will do it before the duel. What hempen homespuns are we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen? A play to war. I'll be an auditor, an actor too, if I see cause. This be the flowers of old, you say the sweet. And of odors. Odors. Oh, to say the sweet, so hath thy breath, my dearest this be dear. But hark a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. Must I speak now? Aye, Mary must you, for you must understand he has gone but to see a noise that he heard and is to come again. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, of colour like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile and eke most lovely drew, as true as true as horse that yet did never tire, I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninus tomb. Man, man, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. The Pyramus enter, your cue is past. It is never tire. Oh! <laughs> as true as true as horse that yet did never tire. If I were fair, this be I were only thine. Oh, monstrous pray, masters, fly, masters, help! <laughs> Why do they run away? This is a knavery of theirs to make me afeard. I will walk up and down here, and I will sing that they will hear I am not afraid. The ousel cock so black of hue, with orange tawny bill. The throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. What angel?
angel wakes me from my flowery bed. The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo grey, whose note full many a man doth mark, and dares not answer grey. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note, as is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtues force per force doth move me on the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. A pity some honest neighbours will not make them friends. Nay, I can blink upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so, neither. But if I have wit enough to get out of this wood, I have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me. I wonder if Titania be awake. Then what it was next that came in her eye, which she must dote on in extremity. <laughs> Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit, what night rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> <laughs> All this falls out better than I could devise, but hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That is finished too. Stand close. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom. What have you come by night and stole my love's heart from him? Fine, if faith, have you no modesty, <gasps> no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What will you tear impatient dancers from my gentle tongue? <gasps> fie, fie, you counterfeit, <gasps> you puppet, <gasps> you puppet. <gasps> Why so? I. That way goes the game. Now I see she hath made compare between our statures. And with her height, her personage, her tall personage, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. I know you've grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low. How low am I, thou painted maypole? How low am I? I am not yet so low that my nails cannot reach into thine eyes. <laughs> Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you, save that in love unto Demetrius I told him of your stealth unto this wood. He followed you, for love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence and threatened me to strike me, spurn me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you will let me quiet go, to Athens will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Who is that hinders you? Foolish heart that I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius! <sighs> oh, she was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Oh, little, again, nothing but low and little. I will no longer stay in your cursed company. <gasps> no, your hands and mine are quicker for a fray. <laughs> My legs are longer, though, to run away. <gasps> I am amazed and know not what to say. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and lain the love juice on some true love's sight. Believe me, king of shadows, I mistook. Hi, therefore, Robin. Overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within another's way. Then, crush this herb into Lysander's eye. Whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from hence all error with his might, and make his eyeballs roll with wanton sight? When they next awake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon.
When my cue comes, call me and I'll answer. My next is most fair, Pyramus. Hey ho, Peter Quince, flute the bellows mender. God's my life, stolen hence and left me asleep. I've had a most rare vision. I've had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he go about to expound this dream. Me thought I was. There is no man can tell what me thought I was. Me thought I was, and me thought I had. But man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it at the latter end of the play before the Duke, per adventure, to make it the more gracious. I will sing it at her death. If we shadows have offended, Think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we shall mend. As I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we shall make amends ere long, else the puck a liar call. So good night, and to you all, give me your hands, if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends.